Welcome back. This week we're going to go with my HT Minnow. Um, came up with this one one night when I was about half in the bag staring at a fire uh, right here in the living room. And <laughs> um, I'm watching this fire go and I noticed that with an immovable piece, you know, immovable so to speak, um, the flames would m dance a lot more around this around a solid log as to what they, they would if there was a cool one. I was just mesmerized by it and I was looking at it and obviously you got, next thing you know I get thinking about flies and designing and I'm like why can't I do that with a fly? So I did a quick drawing here and I'll give you a quick you'll, you'll get a better look at it once we zoom in you're gonna see that I missed my calling I should have been an artist but uh, um, I did a quick drawing, came back the next day, tied around, and got something to where I kind of liked it, and I took it out, and on the very first retrieve, I knew that the fly was absolute garbage. Garbage. Like, didn't do what I had envisioned in my mind at all, and I was frustrated, and I almost just quit, you know, on that fly right there, but then I noticed something on the second and third cast that took me back to when I was fishing with my uncle a couple years back and watching, he's a huge minnow fisherman, huge, deadly with a minnow. And I was watching his minnow in the water and it would always do this kind of half roll and back and half roll and back and he would just destroy fish on it. I mean, he was deadly with the minnow. My uncle Harry and my uncle Sam, those guys are deadly with minnows. Um, so then as I watched the fly a little bit more, I was like, okay, there's, there's, there's something to this. I can do something with this. And after a couple more tweaks and changes, this is what we came up with. It's a very good fly, neutrally buoyant. Um, I just like the way that it rolls and it catches fish. It does really well. So we're going to go ahead and get into the HT Minnow after my little story right there. Hopefully still with me and wondering when the hell we're going to actually tie a fly. So this fly, this is on a B10S size 2 um, and it's tied in fourths. A very simple pattern, very easy to tie and pretty quick, relatively quick. So to start on this one I'm just going to go with uh, this is just a hollow blend. It's like a green, olive, yellow, pearl mix. I don't know. Just kind of throw this together. Maybe get a six to ten strands, maybe a dozen. I don't know. I'm not going to take the time to count it out, but six. We'll go ten to twelve. How's that sound? That sounds a little more realistic. And then I'm just going to fold these over and double them up. Take this right back the length of my hook and I'm stopping just past the point of the hook so I'm not going all the way back to the barb we're going just past the point we're going to measure this out length of the hook length of the hook and trim and there's going to be our internal flash the next thing that I'm going to take on this one is some craft fur um, like I said, we're going to work in fourths on this. So, obviously, we're going to want to progress and get more bulk as we go to the front. So, we're going to start out a little bit sparse in the back. I'm going to line this craft fur up slightly. I'm not, I'm not going to get real picky on on this back portion, any of this stuff that you can see right there, it's just kind of really short. Go ahead and get rid of it. Uh, on the front, I really bulk it up a lot, and you'll see as we get a little bit closer. I'm going to measure this out. I want this going about one and a quarter to one and a half times past my flash. Sticking probably closer to the one and a quarter. Get that measured out. Don't put the hook through your finger. I'm not bleeding. That's good. My craft fur will remain white <laughs> for now. 
And then we're going to reverse tie these. And then flip them back over. So the same thing, I'm going to take olive right on the top here. Not picking out a whole bunch of it. Um, I want this to be pretty slender in the back. And I want to develop a taper as I go to the front. So, I'll take this, line this up as best I can. Don't get real picky about this. Like I said, I want that nice taper. Not a ton of bulk, but I'm not real concerned, and you'll see why, as to not worrying about all this stuff being lined up. This winds up getting covered up, actually. So then I'm going to take and lay this over the same length. Let me see if I can turn this and I'll zoom in to see if this makes any sense or if the camera actually picks it up. So what I'm doing is I, I just lay this on here and I have my thumb on one side and my finger on the other side of the hook and I just kind of roll my fingers down over top of that and it just spreads this around slightly to where the olive overtakes the white and the the white is more pronounced on the bottom but there's a lateral line that is partially olive partially white does it really make that big of a difference hell no but it looks good so I do it go ahead and move one or two thread lengths forward and then like I said we're reverse tying this so go ahead and flip these around I got a couple short white hairs that are covering up my olive but no big deal so there's the tail section I'm gonna come up to the front here my whites a little bit longer I don't really like that but I'll live with it Everything looks good. Everything looks good. I'm going to move that to the front slightly. And then I'm going to take same thing, only I'm going with bucktail on this one. Originally when I designed this one, this was going to be the prop. This was going to be the immovable piece, the unburnt piece of wood. Eh, it didn't quite work out. I reverse tied it. Um, it just, it, it didn't work out. <laughs> Plain and simple, it just did not work out. So I went away from reverse tying and we're just tying this in normally. And go ahead and cut that at an angle. Like I said, we're tying this in fourths. Each time you're just moving up the same amount of distance before you tie in new material. So there we go right there with our olive bucktail same thing I'm gonna flip this over and then I'm gonna tie in the white this thing is pretty well picked through pretty well picked through when I tied this in in reverse um, like I said it just stuck out way too much and the deer hair wound up being about like this instead of back at the angle that it's at now and it just did not work out. I tried a few different other ideas, techniques, whatever it may be to get the original design or idea how it, I, I wanted it to work out but it just didn't so kind of put that one on the back burner for now maybe I'll revisit it later but same thing on the bottom here I'm just gonna go ahead and tie in this white same distance as or the same length as the olive. Go ahead and get this tied in, build a taper through here. Don't worry about covering all this stuff up. If you got a little bit of a mess there, it's fine. Um, it's all gonna get covered up as we add material. Now, you can take and just pinch this back slightly and then give one solid anchor wrap right there and it'll kind of flare it out just enough. It looks more flared on the bottom because I'm catching the hook point, but It'll flare it out just enough to where it's going to help with our taper 
on the next material that we tie in and the next one that we tie in is going to be this the same thing that I used on the dink this is just the, the cashmere goat it has these long fibers um, I tried the Sanyo's 4.0 didn't quite give me the motion that I wanted um, it was close but I, I like this goat just a little bit better has a little bit more motion, a little bit more whip in the tail, and it has a nice taper on the way back. That was another big thing that I was looking for. So I'm going to take a clump of this, and the rest of the materials are going to be reverse tied, um, just like we did with the craft fur at the beginning. So. That's good enough. This is going to be reverse tied, like I was saying, and it's going to go just slightly past, probably a quarter times past the um, the craft fur that we have back there. So measure this out, and like I said, we're going to reverse tie this. Go ahead and get it tied in. Have one, two, and then a third tight. Mm, I'm not too happy with that actually. I'm going to give another wrap or two. It seemed like it wanted to rotate on me. These are non compressible fibers, so it will, it will move on you. Make sure that you get these nice and secure, and it does help every once in a while after you tie these in on the whole bundle come right in front, go just on the shank of the hook, and then really tighten it down, then you can go back over to the top, because if you don't, things will rotate on you after a while. Um, well, it's not necessarily going to rotate on you, it just has a higher tendency to rotate, so make sure you get a wrap or two on that shank, um, just to secure things a little bit more. Nothing frustrates me more than having materials rotate when I'm fishing them. Doesn't happen too often these days, but boy, when I was a kid, I used to get furious. I used to get pretty mad as a kid when my stuff would rotate, and I didn't know why the hell it was doing it, but I think I got it somewhat squared away now. Same thing with this. Go ahead and get some of the longer junk fibers out of there. Line this up the same length, slightly longer if you want to, with the olive and the white, slightly, slightly longer. Oh, get out of there. And then there we go. We're going to trim this off. And then same thing. Reverse tie this. Oh, come on now. You can see where we're starting to get this nice little taper. We're starting to get that. When it gets wet is when you really see this taper. One, two, three. We're secure. Go up to the shank of the hook again. And then I'll come back. When this gets wet, you're going to see this taper. It's going to be really slender in this tail. You have actually really nice motion on this as well. I mean, it's not an excessive amount of motion like you're used to seeing with an articulated fly or anything like that. But this does have a little bit of a kick to it. But like I said, the biggest thing on this is when you're fishing this, being that it's neutrally buoyant, it kind of gives that half roll and it'll show its belly like a dead minnow. Um, and like I said, after watching my Uncle Harry for a couple of hours, um, it just it just makes sense as to why it's so effective. You get the white and shiny side of the minnow coming up, and fish realize that it's dying or already dead. And opportunistic. So I'm going to take. 
some lateral scale. And I'm going to run this right down both sides. You'll see it as I flip it on the camera side here. As I come around. A lot of this is going to get covered up, but as it gets wet, it comes through. And it just gives a nice little shine on your lateral lines. You'll see as I turn that around, you can see when the light hits that right. I mean, that thing gives off so much, so much of a reflection for one material or for one little strand, it sure gives off a lot. So Now, the next thing I'm going to do is advance this right up to my eye. Here's the drawing, by the way. Here's the first one that I did along with a bunch of scribbles and everything. Yeah, I missed my calling. I should have been, I should have been an artist. There's the one that I did later on. Both of them suck. <laughs> what are you going to do? Probably a good thing that I turned out to be a mechanic, huh? I was pretty impressed with it when I did it the first night. I was like, oh yeah, this is a good drawing. I'll get it the next day. And it's like, hmm. Yep. I know what happened there. So, the last material that we're actually going to tie on here is going to be the craft fur. And you can see with this, I mean, the first the the chunk that I took off I'll zoom out a little bit so you can kind of see it for reference the chunk that I cut off here I mean that's that's a healthy amount of craft fur a lot of this is going to come out when I clean it through the comb this is what we have now there's all the junk that came out in the comb and then I'm going to take this and line these up as best I can just coming through one time and lining them up. I know I have a little bit more, you know, I got some shorter materials in there. I got some shorter fibers. That's fine. I want the bulk of my material down where my fingers are at right now. Um, and that'll make a little bit more sense as we get to shaping the head on this one. So with this, I want it coming back three quarters of, well, a half to three quarters of the way back the, the, the goat get some of those fibers out there a little too long so there's about my halfway point there's the end of the goat where my finger is is it still in the frame yeah it is we're good so right there is the distance that I want I'm going to flip this around in my hand and once again we're reverse tying this one now this is where it's really imperative to get your material going 360 degrees around your hook because when we form the head on this one if you don't have it a complete 360 you'll have gaps in the head and it just makes it a little bit more difficult to finish and get the nice round shape that you're after so you can see we have a decent amount of material right there um, that's a pretty good chunk and I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna come back right here to where I'm on the hook I'm off of all the material I made one or two tight wraps right there just cinch that down and then we're going to do the same thing with the olive I'll come to this side here and get just what seems to be an obscene amount of material and cut this off but like I said I'd rather have more than more than I need than not enough because it will the head of the fly will just look lost if, if you don't have enough so I'd rather err on the heavy side now I'm gonna take this even things out somewhat don't get real particular on this just there you can see that's what we're looking at and then same thing go ahead and transfer this over in your hand and get it facing the opposite direction now some of these short fibers will wind up being a pain a little bit later but I haven't found a good way to get rid of them if I do I'll 
I'll let you guys know. Some of these short fibers will get to be a pain when you do this when you're when you're forming the head. And then go ahead and pick this up. Trim off your excess. Don't worry about making it nice and clean or anything like that. Bring your olive on top, your white on the bottom. There we go. Things look pretty good. Things look pretty good. Actually, I want to bring that forward just a little bit. My white was a little bit further ahead than the olive, and it, it wouldn't have made a difference. I just saw it and didn't like it, so I'm going to make sure that my wraps are nice and even. My white was tied in a little bit further ahead than the olive was, and it just wasn't going to be the best look. So we got that squared away now. Squared away. Now here's where you can come through and really make a couple of good tight wraps right there. Um, once you're on that bare hook again, go ahead and clear all of this stuff out of your way and then whip finish. two and third we're good to go now this is where it gets a little bit tricky and it takes a while to get this down well at least it took me a little while you guys might get it on the first go who knows I sure didn't so any of these small short fibers that come out right now Go ahead and just clip them. See how I'm moving my thumb or I'm moving my hands back, and some of these short fibers are coming out. I'm able to get them clipped right now. It's going to save me a little bit of frustration later. When I start working with this UV, see how it looks on on the camera side. It looks pretty solid. Pretty solid. Hey, hey. There we go. So now with this, I go with the UV uh, thin. You can use the thick. I've used it a couple of times. It's worked okay. The thin is just so much easier to work with. It really is. It makes this portion of the fly so much easier. And all I'm going to do is spread some of this thin around here. Get right up to the front. Kind of roll this around. And I see some short fibers that are going to probably make me cuss. So. I know you can't really see what I'm doing because I'm on my side here, but I'm going to bring it around in a second. And like I said, all I'm doing is I'm just taking this thin and I'm spreading this over. Just forming a head real quick. Oh, you're going to get cut. I guarantee you that one's getting cut. And, and go ahead and just spread this out make sure it's nice and even like I said it's so much easier get out of there it's so much easier using the thin UV than the thick because it just it it moves itself the thick you have to brush and get it where you want it the thin just works so much better so now I have all of this pulled back everything is nice and tight all I'm going to do is move my fingers forward just slightly and you can see where it's starting to bubble this head out a little bit. Things are starting to get the profile that we want and right there is where I want it. Right about like that and I'm just going to take the torch, I'm going to hit this, probably give it a good 10 seconds or so before I move my hands. What's the camera side look like? It's a little sparse on one section. I got it a little heavier on my side. You'll see when I flip this around, it'll look better on mine. And I can fix that if need be. But I think I'll be able to live with it. There'll be an eye that'll cover the majority of that up. But there you have it. It has that nice little bullet style of a head. All of this material flows back into the other section and like I said when this gets wet it gives almost a perfect minnow imitation. You have the lateral line flash 
Um, it really does. I mean, it, it gives a really nice profile in the water. So I'm just going to touch this up a little bit more. Excuse me. Start getting hiccups. And then the last thing that I'll do, um, I'll spare you the time on this one. I'll just take these five millimeter eyes. I'll throw these on one side and then my side. Um, and then that is it. This is what the finished product looks like right there. Um, but that's it. That's the HT Minnow. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, as always, leave them with me. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But I hope you enjoyed the quick rundown, well, somewhat quick tutorial on the HT. But as always, any questions or comments, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. But thanks again for watching. We'll catch you next week.